Well, it was a nice trip yesterday to the Potluck City Airfield, and I am back now in Port St. Potluck. And if you're wondering why I'm back at the port, stick around and you'll find out. This is John Paulus. You're listening to Life's Potluck Buffet. Quick update about the auto-generated closed captioning. Still spelling my name wrong. Maybe if I try saying something like, it's not Paulus with a U-S, but Paulus with an A-S, something will stick. Let's give that a shot. So, not Paulus U-S, Paulus A-S. Today I pulled up Worksheet 2. And Worksheet 2 is all the ships belong to you. Do you remember the episode from a couple months ago? Well, there's an ancient story about a man with an illness that made him believe that all the cargo ships going in and out of a very big port belonged to him. And he would spend every day going down to the port. In the story, I didn't mention this last time, but his house was kind of far away from the port. It wasn't like he lived really near the port. So he, every day he would make this trip to the port. You know, like a long commute. And he would be greeting the ships when they came in and their crews, and he would be so happy when they came into port. If they came back without cargo, he would not think anything of it. He wouldn't let it bug him. And when he was cured of his illness, he would tell people the story of how happy his life was when he was a shipping magnate in his mind. Everything was a pleasure, and none of the pains of business affected him. And remember how we talked about all of that in the episode about card number two. And on worksheet number two, on the top, there's a magenta noodles that are acting as waves. And there are three blue dumplings on the right side, kind of bobbing up and down in the waves there. And on the bottom left-hand side, there's a, the potluck star, which I described in detail yesterday. If you want to learn more about the potluck star and also the potluck starship, go to the last episode, which was about worksheet 23. Okay, so let's start worksheet two. I'm going to use the frame on the right-hand side, which says use this frame to sketch your wildest ideas, to sketch my wildest ideas. You'll remember with card number two, it talked about thinking about where your port is, who the people are there, what it looks like, etc. So your imagined port. And so there's a little frame there on worksheet two to draw our imagined port. I'm going to start putting in some stuff. The more I do these worksheets, the more I realize that Bob Ross was such an amazing artist because the speed with which he would do those paintings is unreal. If you've ever tried to follow along with one of those painting shows, especially Joy of Painting with Bob Ross, you probably know how difficult it is to paint as quickly as he paints. And I'm really finding that to be the case. Okay, so I'm going to start to sketch what my port looks like. I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to make it an open harbor. I, this, so this is not, this is going to be, here's what I have in mind. Okay, so I'm going to make an open harbor here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some little houses on the side of it, coming down uh, off a kind of cliff side, you know. All right, these are all in blue. I'm drawing these houses in. Um, I'll switch colors when I get to something else. Yeah, I like the idea that there are a lot of people in the port, and that it's not a it's not an isolated place or a solitary place. It's a it's a busy place. I'm gonna draw a little hillside here, uh, which I'll do in blue and just. You know, Sketch that in. I'm going to do a little bit of a yeah, pointy cliffside here as well on our port. Oh, that's great. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to put a couple of windows in the houses. This is going to take too long. See, I, I know Bob Ross wouldn't, you know, when he makes a, he'll occasionally make a shed 
on his uh, drawing show. I mean, on his painting show. And when he makes that shed, he puts in the roof and the window so quickly. He uses the palette knife. You know, the thing that you use, that artists use to mix their paints together to when they're blending a color. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. They look like dice <laughs> at these houses. They look like little little dice. That's funny. Okay. Well, there they are on the on the hillside. Um, and I will now um, see what else is in our harbor. Well, what I would like to do is I'm going to draw a crane for unloading of the ships. Like the Pollock Star there. I see it's a, the Pollock Star is on the left-hand side. It looks like it's trying to get into this harbor. And so I'm going to draw the crane. All right. There is the, you know those cranes that are at ports? And they, they kind of um, kind of look like that. And, and I'm going to put a little um, I was going to put a little cargo thing that was lifting up on the crane. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm putting a little uh, shipping container that the crane is lifting up. That's fun. That's that cargo. Oh, I should put a, a ship down there that's unloading. This is where foreshortening comes in because I'm trying to make it look a little bit plausible. And I like to, you know, thank Commander Mark for that from that um, television show of years ago. And I know Commander Mark is still producing, uh, still producing. I think he's doing episodes on YouTube, and I think that he is also doing things with schools and stuff, so that's excellent. And, um, yeah, he's a, a great um, artist, great draw, great drawing teacher. Okay. Um, okay, so that's, we're going to call that the ship that's unloading. And now I am going to put in, what else am I going to put in? Oh, you know, I'm going to change this to a different color. Here's me changing the ink. I'm going to do uh, green. I'm do green. Oops, I just changed that to green. And I'm going to go back to blue so that stays in blue. Okay. Um, ah, all right. Okay. Let's get up here and see if we can get the green again. Okay, oops, I missed it. And, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a, this looks like a Canary Island date palm. I always like to put a Canary Island date palm in my pictures. Yeah, this is my version of Bob Ross. I used to live in a house that had a Canary Island date palm outside of it and I like them. They're sturdy, and they're nice trees, and that's why I like them. Okay, so I'm going to, I just switched the, I'm doing that on the left-hand side, I, I just switched the, the ink to brown, so I could draw the trunk of the Canary Island date palm, and that's there too. How lovely. And let's see what else we have here in this harbor. Oh, you know, I would be remiss if there's not a small, given yesterday's episode, I would be remiss not to put a small canal in here. So the lower part of the city that's not up on the hills, let me just draw on this hill. I'm going to complete the hill in brown. Um, the, the smaller part, I'm sorry, the lower part of the city that is not in hills is going to be kind of like a little bit Venetian. Let's see if I could do this without pulling the other elements. It's the trickiest part about using the, um, the preview program to do this drawing is that, like, you can't, oh, it's still brown. Okay. We are going to not do this in brown. We're going to do it in blue. Um, and there's going to be some canals going in (laughs) 
and I'm going to zoom in. And in this canal, we are going to have in magenta. We're going to have. Oops. Let me do that, redo that. In magenta, in this canal, we are going to have our hovering. You'll have, you know, it's very small, but there's our hovering canal going electric gondolas of the future. I'm just going to put them in as little. You can't quite see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do little, a little dot for, maybe I'll do a little dot for the people on the, oops, I just changed the color of it. Let's go back. Can I do this? Oh, no, I'm not going to do this. And, okay, I think I'm going to, I'm going to call that dot. I was going to try to put a blue dot, a little dot in for the people on the, or it's going to be too much. Okay. All right, so there it is. Let me see if I can move this a little bit further. Ah, oh, there we go. So there's the there's the picture of the port um, with all of the activity going on. And oh, I should put in, of course, I forgot about the treasure chest. Remember from the mapping episode, I was looking for uh, for a couple episodes. I had talked about treasure chests, so I'm going to put one in here. And there it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that's great. And so there's the treasure chest right by the Canary Island date palm. And there's our port for today. I hope you enjoyed watching along and listening as I put together a picture of my wildest dream port. And I hope you enjoy doing the same for yourself. If you enjoyed this episode, please like it. If you're feeling it, please Subscribe if you'd like to, and you could go to lifespotluck.com forward slash worksheets for a copy of this or for a copy of any of the other worksheets that have been featured on Life's Potluck Buffet YouTube podcast. And on that note, I wish you happy drawing <laughs> and have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bon voyage.